Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Matthew 25, 1-13 Verses 1, 2 Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. What a division this makes in the visible church of God. Let us hope that we are not to gather from this that as many as half the professors of Christianity at any time are like these foolish virgins. Yet our Lord would not have mentioned so high a proportion if there were not a very large mixture of foolish with the wise, five of them were wise, and five were foolish. 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They thought that if they had the external, it would be quite enough. The secret store of oil they judged to be unnecessary because it would be unseen. They would employ one hand in carrying the lamp, but to occupy the other hand by holding the oil flask seemed to them to be doing too much, giving themselves up too thoroughly to the work, so they took their lamps, and took no oil with them. They might just as well have had no lamps at all. 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Oil in their lamps and oil with their lamps. Lamps are of no use without oil, yet the oil needs the lamp, or else it cannot be rightly used. The light of profession cannot be truly sustained without the oil of grace. Grace, wherever it exists, ought to show itself, as the oil is made to burn by means of the lamp but it is no use to attempt to make a show unless there is that secret store somewhere by which the external part of religion may be maintained. 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept both the wise and the foolish fell into a state which seemed alike in them both. In the case of good men, Christ's delaying his coming often causes disappointment weariness and then lethargy. And even the true church falls into a deep slumber. In the foolish, the mere professors, this condition goes much further. The being in them no true life, the very name to live becomes abandoned and, before long they give up even the profession of religion when there is no secret oil of grace to sustain it. 6. And at midnight when things had come to the worst at midnight, the coldest and darkest hour, when everybody was asleep. 6. There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. That was a cry which startled everybody. None of the virgins could sleep when once it was announced that the bridegroom was coming. I wish dear friends, that we thought more of the great truth of the second advent. The more often it is preached in due proportion with other truths of God, the better. We still need to hear that midnight cry, go you out to meet him. 7. Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. They could not sleep any longer they were fairly startled and awakened. 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some of your oil ah, me. Now they began to value what they had, before, despised. They were foolish enough to think that oil was unnecessary, but now they saw that it was the one essential thing, so they cried to the wise virgins, Give us some of your oil. And hear the dreadful reason. 8. For our lamps are gone out I do not know any more terrible words than those, our lamps are gone out. It is worse to have a lamp that has gone out than never to have had a lamp at all. Our lamps are gone out. Apostrophe we once rejoiced in them. We promised ourselves a bright future. We said, 
All is well for the marriage supper. Apostrophe but our lamps are gone out, and we have no oil with which to replenish them. O oh sirs, may none of us ever have to lift up that mournful cry. On a dying bed, in the extremity of pain, in the depth of human weakness it is an awful thing to find one's profession burning low, one's hope of heaven going out like the snuff of a candle. 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. It is no easy matter to go and wake up the seller of oil when the midnight hour has struck. O oh you who are putting off repentance to a dying bed, you are foolish virgins, indeed. Your folly has reached the utmost height. You will have more than enough to do when you lie there with a the death sweat cold upon your brow, without then having to seek the grace which you are neglecting to obtain today, but which you will value then. 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. While they were not there. 10. 11. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Too late. So that they could not enter. 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not I never knew you, says Christ in another place and this knowledge of his is always bound up with affection. He loves no heart that he knows not in this sense. Those whom he knows, he loves. Will he ever say to me or to you, dear friend, I know you not? God grant that he never may have cause to do so. 13. Watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes.